All right, everybody, we are back with another video here. So today's video is actually supposed to be part two of my shed mining video of going to 240 volt, but uh, my electrician hasn't gotten back to me yet. Uh, he's super busy, he's moving, and he's got some side jobs lined up, so he'll get to me in the next few days. So hopefully within the next week, I can get that part two video put up. But uh, over the last 24 hours, uh, some bad stuff actually happened in my shed, so I'm gonna get into that today. Uh, one of my rigs got wet. We had a massive storm. It was like a monsoon out here. I'm uh, actually gonna get on top of the shed. I'll show you how I fixed it and where exactly it leaked. Uh, one of my rigs got wet and we're gonna try and flip out the motherboard, I believe, that will fix the rig and the problem. I hope so, fingers crossed. So, uh, also gonna show y'all, I got all my racks and everything all set up here with all the fans and all my rigs. So, we're gonna go over that. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you stick around until the end, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. We try to do daily, if not at least every few day, uh, videos here on just the mining space in general. Sometimes it's me giving my opinion, sometimes it's here at the farm. So, yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna flip around the camera, we're gonna go over the rigs first. So, around. All right, so, here in the shed we have these six, sorry, these seven rigs right now. We've got this one over here that's running. So. As you can see, it looks a little different from the last time we were in here. I did end up getting these three racks all set up. Now, I haven't quite gotten the rig that's in my basement down here yet, just like I haven't gotten this one up here, and then we have the one that got wet. So, we do have the 3090s and the 3060 Ti rig right here. Seems to be going really, really well. I was a little worried with this being the rack here at the very end i was a little worried with all the warm air because this is cool over here getting warmer getting hot was worried that these rigs were going to run a little warm but they actually don't they they seem to stay right around 60 to 58 degrees celsius so then we also have the one of the 3090 rigs down below and this is actually one of the, the rig that got wet um there was two rigs that got wet this was one of them because it was over here before i had these racks here it was leaking from the ceiling. I'll see if you can, I don't think you can see it because the leak was actually from the outside. It was leaking right here on this seam and then it was leaking over here and the water over here was actually leaking right, you can see I still have the towel on here. It was leaking right down onto this, this outlet and splashing all over the rig. Now, when I finally realized that it was leaking, a little too late. Uh, the one rig that was down here on the bottom was turned off and then the other rig that was over here getting a little bit of splashed on it It was actually just a little bit wet. I turned it all off immediately uh, The one rig that, that was still on but I turned off and it was uh, still okay I was able to wipe that off a little bit move everything over and it was able to be turned back on later in the evening And everything was fine now Obviously the one rig we're gonna get into at the end of the uh, video here it wasn't able to turn back on. Well, it, it turns back on, but it just kind of flutters for a second and then shuts off. So like I said, I, I think it's a motherboard problem, but everything else seemed to be fine. Everything else made it. There was no actual damage other than what I believe is just a motherboard. So as you can see back around, got all my wires, got all my cable management, everything looks good. Everything looks good. Like I said, I'm actually kind of surprised at how cool everything stays. I still got a little bit of cable management to do. I wanna make all these cables look nice and pretty. I wanna run all my ethernet cables. I was considering running them through the ceiling up here because there's really not much going on besides the inline fans. So probably here within the next week, I'm gonna buy a couple more racks and my partner, uh, hopefully within the next, let's say two weeks, should start getting all of his parts. I do his graphics cards. So that's the main thing because the price seems to be going up and down right now. Uh, he got them, I believe he said from Newegg, because they, they took their quantity, um, how many you can order at one time off. I know there was like a 48 hour limit on how many you could order. Sometimes they would only allow you to order two. I believe it's still on the power supplies, but the graphics cards, uh, I know the other day he ordered eight of them at one time. Uh, so hopefully within the next week or two, we should be getting some of his stuff hooked up over here. Like I said, I'm gonna get the racks. Then I need the electrician to come over. He's gonna hook up all the rest of the 240 volt lines over here. And the shed should be pretty good. It should be up and running. Um, not gonna talk about it in this video really, but I'm looking at getting an Antminer S19 uh, Pro or a Plus. I can't remember which one it was, but looking at getting that. And I'm looking at getting the Bitmain Hydro. Just don't know what the power requirements and um, what other requirements it would take to run that. So those are gonna be some future discussions, future videos. But 
I think that's about it for here in the shed, all the positivity. So now the doom and gloom, like I said, I already showed you in here where it leaked. Just in case didn't, I will put it up here. Big leak right up in there. Sorry, excuse my hand. Terrible. So, going to probably end this video right about here. Well, this part of it, I'm going to go up into my house and I'm gonna crawl out the window and I will show you in the middle of the rainstorm, what was, what was um, non-sooning, I sealed. I will show you what I did uh, to uh, figure that out and it seems to be uh, doing really well. So I'll see you here in one second. I'm gonna jump up on the roof. All right, so we're out here on my top roof. We're on top of the shed right here. Um, as you can see, I'll walk to the edge here. So you can see this is the door going right into the shed. So the issue was is, I'll flip it. So the issue was this seam right here was not sealed against the, uh, the house the whole way down as you can see it now when it was monsooning out here in the rain i ran to the home depot well lowe's actually sorry i ran to lowe's and i got this spray foam and i figured that would help gum it up because it's it's really hard to apply stuff when it's pouring down rain so i ended up uh going to the home uh lowe's getting this spray foam and then immediately after i got back i plugged up the holes my wife started working on there i thought that well maybe there's something at the home depot that you can get uh, lowe's i keep saying home depot damn uh that there's something at lowe's that can be applied to any surface and in the rain and i actually found this stuff i i can't remember the name of it but it starts with an l and there's an x in the middle uh it's this clear stuff as you can see uh let me camera around i apologize you can see this clear it's not a hundred percent set but it says on the packaging that it can be applied when wet in all seasons to any only issue with it was and wasn't that big of a problem. It was, I think, $12 a tube, considering normal caulking is like three, four, five dollars a tube. So it was really expensive, but I needed it. So I went and I grabbed uh, six tubes. Uh, it was probably 11 o'clock at night. I was sitting out here. I was caulking in the rain. My son was actually <laughs> holding a flashlight through the, through the storm and it, it worked well. We didn't get any more leaks. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the problem is solved. Um, I do have a really, really nice fire down as you can see the whole way down here. And what I think I'm going to do is I still have two tubes left that I didn't use. I think I'm going to come out and I'm going to re-caulk all of this just in case to get another coat on it to make sure it's covered so that's what happened that's the fix um i i really hope that this doesn't happen again knock on wood the issue was is i've been through rainstorms before it is it's even snowed for the entire year and this shed has never leaked but to um credit to mother nature uh it's not stormed like that and since i've owned this house it's never really stormed like that it was it was raining up, if that's possible. It was pretty nuts to watch. I definitely thought we were in the middle of a hurricane. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to actually jump back into my wife's office where I'm going to take off the motherboard that I believe is water damaged. Uh, and then we're going to plug in the new one and see if we can get it to work. So yeah, I'll see you all back there. Give me one second. All right, everyone. So we're here. Uh, we're going to flip this motherboard. Like I said, I got a new one right here. We're going to flip this one out for the one that's on here. That I believe is water damaged and I know I keep saying it but fingers crossed that it fixes it I really hope it's not anything else so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, speed up this video so it's not so boring watching me do this so
All right, we got the motherboard all flipped out here. Uh, it's a moment of truth. Um, my wife has to re-download all the drivers and do everything for the new motherboard, so this is the moment of truth. I'm going to hit the power cable, the power switch, and see if it all spins to life. Well, I should probably turn these boys on first. Let's see. So, I probably should have fired up the rig, or at least attempted to fire up the rig at least once or twice, just to show you guys. Show It's posting. That's all it's doing. So, um, I probably should have fired up the other rig and showed you guys all what it was doing now. Uh, it would turn on just like it did, and then turn immediately back off. So, I really do believe that it's a uh, motherboard problem, and that does seem to be it. It did get a little bit wet, so I don't exactly know what's wrong with it, but... Seems to be fixed and up and running now. Now, the last part of this video I did want to talk about is um, I have more than this, but these are just a few of the motherboards that I have. Now, like this one, we'll go back into this box, obviously, and it's it's broken. Uh, I have two more of them right here. Two more of them right here. But what I was getting at is, is in case anybody's wondering, if you're just really nice and you talk with the MSI people and you go on and you register the warranty information, I literally have some of my my, my papers. I'm not I'm not trying to show too much of my personal information, but I literally have my RMA numbers and everything right here with my shipping labels that they paid for, and I'm about to ship four motherboards to them to have them either fixed or combined into one or two or to get all of them, like I said, working. So. Um, just because something's broken doesn't mean you have to sell it for parts or it's completely out of commission. Uh, so, as you can see, this is all up and running. I'm going to have my wife come and do whatever needs to be done next to this so I can get this guy back down into the uh, shed. And uh, probably the next time you see the shed, I'm hoping to have all the rigs uh, on the shelves with all the fans hooked up. And then uh, keep your eyes out for that part two video with uh, my electrician who's going to be coming to hook up the rest of that 220 volts. So... Uh, I will let you all go. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.